once again. Welcome once again. In the previous video, we have learnt about electric flux. Now we will discuss about the Gauss law and applications of Gauss law. Students, to understand the Gauss law, we should know about one surface. That is Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface. Generally, Gaussian surface is a imaginary closed surface containing charged body. What is that? The imaginary closed surface containing a charged body that we are calling Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface must be closed of any shape, any size and it must contain charged body within it. That we are calling Gaussian surface. For example, see here, I can take this is a closed surface. This is a closed surface. In this closed surface, if a charged body is known or charge is known, this indicates what? Gaussian surface or you can take like this also. This is what a closed surface. The closed surface containing charges within it, that we are calling Gaussian surface, or like this also. What you can take? This is what a cylinder. Cylinder is a closed surface. In the case it contain a charges within it, then we are calling it as a Gaussian surface. Actually, what is the Gaussian surface? The imaginary closed surface containing the charges within it, that we are calling Gaussian surface. First of all, if a charge is positive, electric intensity acting radially upward. If a charge is negative, then electric intensity taken radially inward. For a positive charge and a negative charge, how to take the direction of electric flux? For example, see here. If it is a positive charge and if it is a negative charge. For positive charge, the direction of electric field intensity is acting like this. And flux can be taken radially over. Similarly, for negative charge, electric field intensity acting radially inward, the flux can be taken inward. So, for positive charge, flux is radially outward, for negative charge, flux is radially inward. Right? Then, what is the statement of Gauss law? And how to prove the Gauss law? Look at me. See here. First of all, I will take a Gaussian surface. The Gaussian surface containing charges within it. For example, see here. This is what? A Gaussian surface you can form. Here so many charges are involved. What charges are here plus Q is available, here plus 2 Q is available, again here plus Q is available. Right? What is the total charge here? Total charge is equal to 2Q plus Q plus Q. How much it is? 4Q is available. For all this, what is the direction of electric intensity? This is the direction of electric intensity. This is what direction of electric intensity. At every point it is radially open. At every point you can take. Statement of Gauss says that the total electric flux through any closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times total charges enclosed by closed surface. See here. How to represent flux here? The total electric flux can be represented by like this. Right? What is the definition of electric flux? The component of electric field, normal to surface area and area vector. What is the statement of Gauss law here? Statement of Gauss law says. Statement of Gauss law. What is the statement here? The total electric flux through any closed surface. The total electric flux through any closed surface. 
total electric flux total electric flux through any closed surface through any closed surface any closed surface is equal to is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times total charges enclosed by surface total charges enclosed by surface enclosed by surface for example again see here what it is it is a gauging surface right here how much charge is involved q charge is the total charge for this what is the direction of electric intensity this is the direction of electric intensity in the space the constant is available that we are calling permittivity epsilon not for this charge there is a flux available how much flux available phi flux is available what gauge says the total electric flux through closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon not times of total charge of enclosed by surface how it is the total electric flux through any closed surface equal to 1 by epsilon not times total charge of enclosed by surface that is the total charge of involved inside the closed surface divided by absolute permittivity indicates the total flux how to say the total flux through any closed surface must be equal to 1 by epsilon not times of total charge of the enclosed by closed surface this what statement of gauge law see here in the gauging surface if a dipole is present then what happens listen me here i will take with the gauging surface here minus q charge is available here plus q charge is available for this positive charge electric field intensity acting radially inward and for this negative charge electric field intensity acting radially inward according to property of the charge specific property of the charge charge is a negative nature what is the total charge here total charge is equal to what plus q of minus q what is total charge here total charge equal to zero right if total charge is zero then what is flux here whenever total charge is zero then flux through a closed surface must be zero what it mean if a dipole present inside the gauging surface the total flux is zero right then how to prove the gauge law here what i said the total electric flux through any closed surface is equal to 1 by epsilon not times of total charge of enclosed by surface let us prove the gauge law proof of the gauge law can see see here first of all i will take a point charge the point charge is surrounded by a gauging surface already i said gauging surface must be closed of any shape of any size look at me here how to take the proof of the gauge law the proof of the gauge law can be Proof of the gauge law. Listen to me here. I will take a point charge. This is what point charge. Let us construct a spherical gaussian surface around this point charge. How about it? See here. What it is? This is spherical gaussian surface. Right? By what radius? Shall I take this the radius? what i can do this is the radius of this gaussian surface for this positive charge electric field intensity acting radially inward outward at any point at any point at this point it is acting radially outward radially outward here also say i either of the same situation at every point electric field intensity acting radially outward in all direction now through this area i will take a small area element This is what small area element. If this is area element, what about area vector? This is what area vector, 
right here area vector is available and electric intensity is available what is electric flux what is the electric flux electric flux is the total number of electric fluid passes through surface so normally or the dot product of electric fluid intensity and area vector this we are calling electric flux see here here electric fluid intensity and area vector both are in same direction same direction in what theta equal to what theta equal to 0 degree theta equal to 0 degree then how it is if theta equal to 0 degree what is the meaning phi equal to what phi equal to what e into s here e represent what electric fluid intensity due to isolated positive charge what is the s surface area of the sphere Actually, shall I call? What am I call? This is equation number one. Right now, here positive charge is available for positive charge. Electric intensity. What is electric intensity due to positive charge? Q divided by how much? Q divided by four phi epsilon naught into r square. From this point, right? What is the S? Surface area. Surface area is what? The S is equal to surface area of sphere. How much it is? This is 4 pi r square. If electric fluid intensity is equal to this value, surface area d is equal to 4 pi r square, then what to write equation 1 here? How to write equation 1? Look at me. If phi equal to what? E. What is E? Electric fluid intensity. How much it is? 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into r square. What is ds? Surface area. How much it is available? 4 pi r square available. Then here 4 5 4 5 get cancelled r square r square get cancelled what is flux available total electric flux must be equal to 1 by epsilon naught times total charges again closer by surface what it is the gauss law the proof of the gauss law how to say the total electric flux through a closed surface equal to 1 by epsilon naught times total charges and closed by closed surface. This is what proof of the Gauss law. Then, what are the importance of this Gauss law? This Gauss law can be applicable for any closed surface, no matter where the charges are available. Either charges are available here or here or here or here also. And whatever say, whatever size of the closer surface, we can apply the Gauss law here. And one more important is here. The Gauss law can be applicable for a symmetrical charge distribution. That is linear charge density, surface charge density, and value charge density. What is that? These are symmetrical charge distributions over the length, over the area, over the value, respectively, you can call. So, mainly the Gauss law is applicable for symmetrical charge distribution for any closed Gaussian surface. By using all these things, Gauss law has so many applications for symmetrical charge distribution. For, for our application, for our syllabus, three applications are available. One is Electric fluid intensity due to infinite charge wire, electric fluid intensity due to thin spherical sheet, and electric fluid intensity due to thin polar sphere. That we will see one by one. That is applications of Gauss law. Let us see first application of the Gauss law. First application of the Gauss law is electric field intensity electric field intensity due to due to infinite infinite Long charge wire infinite long charge wire. This is first application of the Gauss law for ourselves. Electric field intensity due to infinite long charge wire. 
students first of all i will take a long uniformly chapter wire long uniformly chapter wire mean what see here this is what uniformly long chapter wire over which charges are uniformly distributed consider this wire has much length this much length is only right here charges are uniformly distributed charges are uniformly distributed we know that linear charge density how to define linear charge density the charge distributed per unit length that we are calling linear charge density linear charge density can be represented by lambda of this charge distributed per unit length or what is the charge here charge equal to what charge equal to lambda into l so let us call i will take this equation number 1 around this linear charge wire i will construct a gaussian surface like a cylinder how to construct look at me i will construct a gaussian surface like this like a cylinder i will construct see ya this the gaussian surface This volume surface looks like a cylinder. See here, how much radius is available? I want to know this is what the radius represented by R. I desire to find electric field intensity at some point. See here, at this point I need to calculate electric field intensity. It is a point here we need to calculate the electric field intensity. But here. This Gaussian surface has a three phases. One is upper phase, lower phase, and curved surface. And inside the Gaussian surface, positive charges are available. For positive charges, electric field intensity, electric field intensity acting radially outward at any point. At any point, electric field intensity is acting radially outward. But what we say? it contain three phases upper phase lower phase and second one is curved surface see here for this upper surface i will take a area vector this is what area element for this area element if we draw this line this becomes what area vector for lower phase i will take this part area element if we draw this line this indicates what area vector and for this also If we take this point, area element, this represents what area vector. Here, three phases are there. One is the upper phase, lower phase, and curved surface of this Gaussian surface. But upper phase and lower phase does not contribute any electric flux because you know definition of electric flux. What it is? Electric flux is equal to what? Scalar product of electric field and area vector. It is what angle between area vector and electric field intensity for upper phase. How much angle available? In between E and S. In between E and S, so 90 degrees available. Right? For lower phase again, how much angle available? 90 degree available. What is cos minus E? Zero. Zero into E into D S zero. What is flux? Flux is zero. The upper phase and the lower phase does not contribute any electric flux because angle between E and D S must be ninety degree. But look at the curved surface. For curved surface, electric field intensity and the area vector both are in same direction. So this phase only contribute electric flux here. Here how much angle available? Theta equal to what? For this surface, theta equal to what? Theta equal to zero degree available. Right now, then theta equal to zero means what is flux available? Flux equal to what? That is E into D S. Right? This part area of the cylinder. Or what area of the cylinder? Phi equal to what? 
phi equal to e area of cylinder equal to 2 phi r i well, l represent length of the cylinder r equal to its radius shall i call now i will call this is the equation but but what paula says the total electric flux through closed surface equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the total charges enclosed by closed surface. What definition says? So, phi equal to what? Q divided by epsilon naught. Shall we call this? This is what? Equation number 3 now. Just compare equation 2 and 3. Here phi also available, here also phi available. Then form equation 2 and 3. What you can get? Form equation 2 and 3, q divided by epsilon naught must be equal to e into 2 phi r i. But look at equation 1. Equation 1, q equal to lambda integral. If q is equal to lambda integral, then what it becomes? Lambda integral divided by epsilon naught equal to e into 2 phi r i. This L, L get cancelled. Then what is electric field density? Electric free intensity equal to lambda divided by 2 phi epsilon naught into r. This is what electric field intensity due to an infinite long charge wire. You can modify this equation. How to modify? Just multiply by 2 and divide by 2 on both sides. What happens here? E equal to what? 2 into lambda divided by 4 phi epsilon naught into r. This is what? Electric field intensity due to infinite long charged wire. Then on what factor electric field intensity depends here? Electric field intensity due to infinite long charged wire depends on what? Radius of the closing surface and linear charge density of the closing surface. Then what are the constant? 4 phi epsilon naught the constant more the linear charge density and lesser the radius then more amount of electric intensity is available for infinite long charge wire then second application we will see electric intensity due to thin infinite plane speed let us see 